Okay. Where are we headed to? Uh, Furtado Center. Fertitta Center. Oh, Fertitta Center. Sorry. Are you going to eat nothing there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we're going to the new Tillman Fertitta Basketball Center at UH. Gonna get a little tour of it. So stay tuned. Yeah. We got a little peek of it yesterday because uh, we went to the UH basketball game. They played UConn. And we won. Barely. <laughs> they called over 40 fouls that game. <sighs> That's ridiculous. It was a little drag, but still yeah, fun. Yeah, super fun. So now we're gonna go get a full depth of the center instead of being just fans. We'll be a private tour. Private tour, and we're out. Oh, we're late. So we're on the run. Uh, <laughs> oh. We'll have to kind of start. I always start here because most folks don't really know the history of UH basketball and and, and kind of what it's about. Um, University of Houston, you know, when you watch on TV and you look at um, the Final Four and it's yeah. the big dome and stuff, it's because of UH, of those games. So Guy B. Lewis, which is what our arena, uh, uh, Pat Facility is named after, who was our coach, he was the first guy to say, I think this, this game, this college basketball game can go national. He was the one that put um, UH versus UCLA in the Astrodome. It was okay. the first time that a college basketball game was nationally televised. It was the first time college basketball was inside of the dome. And that was purely the brainchild of the University of Houston coach. Um, a lot of people don't realize the dunk was outlawed, actually. The dunk was outlawed in the 60s okay. and um, into the late 70s. Okay. And then when it was brought back, um, and you would get a technical if you dunked. Right. Um, when it was brought back, a lot of coaches didn't utilize it. Uh -huh. They kind of were like, you know what, just do a layup, you're being showboaty. Yeah. And Coach Baby Lewis was like, no, like we should have some fun with it, right? right. Okay. And so, five summer jamma, He's one of the reasons why college basketball is kind of has that swag to it, and it's fun and it's intense. Um, and so he's really one of the pillars in, in the game that I've dedicated my life to. So we're really proud to be a part of <laughs> this legacy. So the, the, the Hawana, University of Oklahoma and the one at Indiana. So um, you guys are too young, but when you build a house, uh -huh. you kind of realize like, oh, um, I don't need this door, I don't need this room. Mm -hmm. And so third time's a charm, and this gotcha. is kind of like the dream one. Gotcha. Um, this is Damian Dotson, he plays for the New York Knicks. Okay. He was not an NBA guy when he came to us, he, and he worked himself into one. Uh -huh. um, when he was here, the ball, you could hear the ball in here, nine times out of 10, it was him. So that's kind of motivation for our kids. Gotcha. Like if you work hard enough, you, you could have, that dream. Okay. This is the practice court. So, um, there's not a lot of schools in the country that can say they, they can have almost an entire wall and a half of banners. We're one of the few. Mm -hmm. So you kind of look at this and, and I know I'm Texas and I know football is key, but this is basketball pedigree here. And we're not into taking a backseat to anybody. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the, these are the numbers we have retired. Um, Elvin Hayes and um, Elijah Wan. When the NBA ranked the top 50 players ever to play the game, mm -hmm. UH was only two schools that had two players on it. Oh, wow. Was that <laughs> So, a couple cool things with the stem. See these cameras at the top, the little black ball? Uh -huh. Those are cameras. When we're practicing them here, we film continuously. And then you'll also, watching us play last night, we were quick, we like to drive, we like to spread the floor. <laughs> That's what these blue lines are about. That's okay. how we teach the game. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, these are the uniforms this year. We're one of only um, nine schools in the country that are Jordan brand. This is Coach Hollis. How you Hi, doing? Coach. Um, we're one of only nine uh, to be Jordan brand. Um, we're the first school that would ever be selected Jordan brand, not based on a professional athlete right. tie-in, so like Oklahoma has Laker fans. Right. We were picked because her head coach was. Okay. And so the Jordan brand is not tied as much to the University of Houston oh. as it is tied to him. As long as we're here, uh -huh. if we leave, they'll have to reevaluate. Oh. So it's, it's mainly more of a relationship with us. Um, but these are some of the shoes they get. They got last year, I think they got 23 pairs. I didn't know Jordan made that many different. <laughs> they make so many cool ones. Yes, but you see it in like all different from cross rangers to retros to um, 
that's the last year's version of the UH specific one they made for us. Okay. Um, and then these are the uniforms. Can I touch them? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you seen this? Have you seen these Jordans? The Lunar New Year's? Oh, it's almost Lunar New Year's now. <laughs> yeah, Lunar New Year's tonight. Is it? Yeah, at midnight. <laughs> Those are. That's cool. Yep. A lot of them are walking the orange ones. Yeah, so um, um, those are Chris Paul's. So Chris Paul had sent them oh. to these kids. Oh, okay. And um, a lot of our kids like the low top ones now. Mm -hmm. Because um, all that tape and stuff usually takes care of their ankles. Yeah. yeah. So they'd rather have a little bit of flexibility with the shoe. And then we on purpose, um, when we built this, we made sure that that front of the building was all glass. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you get onto the athletic department side of these college campuses, it's all very like brick and mortar and it's so separated from the campus. Right. And we really want to keep in mind that we represent the University of Houston. We have Houston on our chest and there's a lot of pride in that. So we want to be able to see the school that we represent. Our whole thing is that this should be, you go into some facilities and it's all of these murals and graphics of players of the past. Yeah. This uh -huh. is their home. And if you go to your parents' house, I'm sure there's tons of pictures of you, uh -huh. right? Well, this right. is their house. We gotcha. want pictures of them. Okay. So this was us. We went to Hawaii for Christmas. Oh, nice. So we won the Diamond Head Classic. Jeff and I, our SID Jeff and I, were on the rocks, right. like taking the picture, and like waves were like coming over oh, our head. No. We were, like, just super quick smile <laughs> for the love of God. The picture turned out really well. Yeah, <laughs> we were like, just stop moving. And then last summer, y'all went to Italy. Yeah, we went to Italy. We were there for ten days. Ooh. So here's our players' lounge. Um, this. Uh, home we put up here really kind of tells the story of what we think of this building and, and what it means to us. And the idea is, you know, fans see the final result in the Petita Center. Mm -hmm. They don't see everything that went into that. They don't see the them in the weight room the day after the game. They don't see the practice or midnight and the kids having stuff. Um, this is really old rule was that you could only feed your players five days a week. Um, and then you had to give them per diem on the weekend. And it was a $20 per diem. You saw Chris Harris. He's 6'10". $20 is breakfast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so like past 8 a.m. Saturday, what's the plan? Yeah. So uh, when the University of Wisconsin went to the Final Four a couple years, um, there's tons of mandatory press you have to do when you go to the Final Four. And for one of their press availabilities, they got up and said, I'm hungry. And so and they kind of broke it down, what the rule was. And as a result, the rules kind of opened up. And so we're able... Um, Hey, Nate. Mm -hmm. And then um, 24 7, 365, we have a fully stocked refrigerator for them. Uh, okay. It's food we want them to eat. Yeah. Healthy. <laughs> a good choice. So, you know, um, but it's fully stocked, so, and it's good stuff. There's like roast beef and carrots, broccoli. Um, oh, it's all meal prepped and everything. Yeah, gotcha. they'll be shrimp grits sometimes. Uh -huh. We work with the campus caterers. We change it out three times a week, so it's constantly new uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. But we, we know that you talk here a lot of, ah, oh, these student athletes don't have any food. Um, I hear you would trust Yeah. <laughs> They're lucky to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important, right? Like, look, think about how much these kids are going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine doing that on an empty stomach? Oh, miserable. How you doing, Noah? Bryson. Hey, hey how are you? Quick picture? Sure. Yeah. All right. That's cool. One, two, three. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so this is their challenge. Um, they collect new shoes in the summertime. We'll bring in gaming systems and they can kind of. Um, Blackout shoes came in conveniently a day late. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Were they good though? Yeah, no, I forgot. Uh, uh, we'll bring gaming systems and they'll have like video game tournaments mm -hmm. and all that jazz. You can tell I'm old and I'm like, video games? <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly not. Kids gotta lineup. be kids still, right? I know. I'm not in the lineup. Um, and then, of course, you know, the pool, like, don't you think you should go to this playground? But um, overlooking the court. And it's also fun um, just because um, our relationship with the Rockets, but our relationship with the NBA, who's ever playing the Rockets, a lot of times we'll use our facility as a practice the day before or shoot around or mm -hmm. during the playoffs. We can sometimes turn into their home court. So mm -hmm. it's also a great thing that our players get to overlook and there would. Like last year, Golden State was here, and so Whoa. there would be Durant and Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. They could see how they practice. And, and they were like inviting them down, and, you know, handshakes yeah. and pictures. And That's like stretching. good motivation too. It's like, oh, it's only it so far, so close <laughs> to them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'm gonna like bust into something. Um, so these are actually pro at tables, like um, like the court side uh -huh. um, um, lights that we have in the games, but they're off. We usually turn them off in the season because it's like focus. Yeah. And then honestly, these kids only have mattresses back there, so like in between class, sometimes they crash. Yeah. <laughs> but these um, college basketball roster, you get 13 scholarships. Mm -hmm. Most teams don't um, um, have any more than 15 at a time. We put 18 lockers in here because one thing that um, Coach realized when he was in the NBA and he'd fly to LA to work out James Harden was it was such a hassle to go find him a gym to go work him out. And when we got here and we realized, hey, this is such a great city, so even if a kid's not from Houston, there's a good chance that Houston will become their home. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted them to know that once a Coug, always a Coug. If you are a Coug and you are still playing in the NBA, overseas, wherever, we can still be your home base. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important to us that they know that we're still, yeah. um, they're still part of us. And these walkers, nothing crazy. Soup. Um, oh, graduation stuff. Right. <laughs> um, but you have the lights, you have a safe. You have, this is the shoe closet. So mm -hmm. programs, film rooms, and they're so flush. And mm -hmm. they have like recliners. Mm -hmm. It's a classroom. I need you to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want yeah. you to have like your comfy blanket and popcorn yeah. and chamomile tea. Like, I'm here <laughs> to learn. So, um, but just like the bathroom, um, as the tables go up, the height gets higher so mm -hmm. that our big kids don't, their knees don't hit. Uh. <laughs> and then we've just been doing that since um, we were at Washington State. It's just magnets. Yeah. But kind of a week after playing, it's always kind of fun to see how the conference stands yeah. has shaken up. So right now we're tied for first with Tulsa. This is the coaches floor. It's not nearly as exciting. <laughs> we definitely put the money into the place. Very corporate feeling. Exactly. <laughs> that was the first, uh, um, that was the first uh, jump ball ever in the Fertitta Center. Oh. Ooh. I feel like we got it. <laughs> <laughs> looks like it. At least the way the capture did, it looks like. Brian was afraid of that. He got his hip into it. And so as he was jumping, he was like pushing the other guy away. <laughs> um, this is the Swift's team. We've been doing this against the Colorado State. Um, again, this is their home. They should see themselves. We probably should get a trophy case at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, the uh, championship trophy last year. His Coach of the Year awards. He's, awesome. he's a two-time, um, he's a three-time national coach of the year. He's back-to-back -back conference coach of the year. So I feel like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is S and Sienna this summer. Oh, okay. And then the Vatican. Oh, wow. Are you a little go kooks to yeah. the Vatican? <laughs> so cool. Um, here's the Leaning Tower. My niece. Some of them are kind of leaning with it too. <laughs> I know, we're all, I was like, it doesn't look as pronounced. Does it really look? <laughs> they make it out to be in other pictures, I guess. I know, oh. I mean, I know, I'm like, did we do that? <laughs> and then community service and getting involved in the community is important to us. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of NCAA legislation, so once the season starts, we really can't do much. Mm -hmm. um, but out of season, we try to do as much as we can. So we do a lot of stuff with like Blackshear and the UH Charter School here on campus, mm -hmm. um, children's hospital um we'll team up with some of the tv stations and book drives and, and we do what we can what size t-shirts are you guys oh uh large um medium or small this is my office <laughs> turns into a storage closet quick thank you is that i think it's good okay you notice, like, the, the band people also have, like, um, Jordan sponsored. Yep. Um, they went and bought them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So cool. It was so cool. I was like, that's, that's so Cameron thoughtful. Like, that's yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank that's you. That's right, right? Yeah. Is that good? It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice quality. So do y'all usually give these shirts out for games or? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Feel odd. laughs> no. 
Um, I designed, I'll go and design a couple shirts across a year, so the one you're yeah. wearing yeah. Mm -hmm. is one of them, and then ours last night was a bit different. I always change ours a little bit. Yeah. Um, but no, I just like to have t-shirts to give. Yeah. <laughs> brand awareness for the Oh, brand. yeah, for sure. Um, Basie Ike Kid, here's Coach. The young Coach Sampson, so that's my brother. <laughs> hey. Hey, how are you? So he's working down film right now for USF. Oh, nice. So again, we make sure each kid has these. And then we always have this in our band, or our student body. Because again, like the, we represent the school and we're a mirror to our school. And so it's important that that um, balance is there. <laughs> This was um, the celebration um, right after the Ohio State game that sent us to the Sweet 16. Ah, okay. So that's my brother and dad. And it was funny because Kellen was at Target um, getting milk for his daughter. <laughs> and he sold water guns and he was like, if we win. Because we had won, we'd had a couple, I mean a lot of big games last year. And inevitably when they'd walk in, the, co the players would be there with water and like dumping yeah. them. Mm -hmm. and, be, and so they were like, no, we're going to surprise them. <laughs> um, my uh, dad's office at the coach's office. These are um, most of us national coach of the year awards are in North Carolina, where we're from. Okay. okay. Um, but these are kind of what they look like, and it kind of shows you some of the awards he's won. Yeah, I'm never good at this. <laughs> the floor's too clean. Honestly. <laughs> Um, and then you kind of see, um, you know, the first, um, his 600 career wins, he's one of only, um, around 30 coaches in history that's ever hit that number, okay. and he's one of them. So did someone make that board for him? Yeah, or? the marketing director from last year had that made for him. Wow. And so it's nails. Yeah, so with cool. like twine or string. Yeah. That's so and then, cool. And then this one was really great, um, his players at Mount Connor Tech, which was his first job. Mm -hmm. When he hit that 600 milestone, they went and found the paper, the clippings of when he was hired mm -hmm. and his oh, first wow. home win and his first road win. And they presented that to him. And so that was from Montana Tech. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so sweet. Um, Final Four, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, he, we are full blood Native American. And so he was the first Native American ever to be the head coach in a Final Four. Oh, wow. And so far, the only one. <laughs> we've really cornered the Native market. Mm -hmm. We're it. <laughs> 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 um, these are just some of his like NBA guys. There's Pat Beverly and yeah. James Harden, and there's he and Michael Jordan, Eric Gordon, Chris Paul, him and uh, John Wooden, the legendary coach at UCLA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know he knows people. <laughs> um, here's the most recent trophy. So that was the diamond head, and these wow. are his rings. Y'all got a ring for going to the Sweet Sixteen, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So they let me design them. So I was on the court cutting down the nets and I was texting the jeweler and I was like, this is gonna be big because we get to be a champion. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of the purpose behind us designing it, we, when you look at a lot of the rings, you mm -hmm. can't tell what sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to incorporate to make sure if you saw it, you knew it was basketball. Yeah. Um, American Conference champion, Sweet 16 um, for the city, the ranking or the, the record, final AP ranking, so we were 11th in the country. Samson, head coach, and then we, um, 33 wins with the most in program history. So last year was a good year. Yeah, I did, one of my friends played for A&M, uh -huh. or on the women's team, and she tells like, yeah, every time you make it to each round, like 216, Elite Eight, Final Four, you get a ring. We do, you know, people take for granted how hard it is to get to the yeah. play tournament, and so it's such an accomplishment yeah. that that's our rule. If you make it, you get one. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's crazy. But then when you think about it, it's like there's so many schools. There's, in basketball, there's over 300. Yeah. On football, Boom. there's 100 and some odd. Yeah. And there's how many bowls, Boom. right? Yeah. And 68 out of mm -hmm. 300 even make this tournament. Mm -hmm. It's such a hard thing yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. You can't ever be, um, take it for granted. Oh, yeah. Like North Carolina this year, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. they probably won't make the tournament. That's a blue blood. That is North Carolina. Yeah. You just can't take it for granted and you mm -hmm. have to celebrate. Yeah. Um, Dad's gone to Iraq twice to visit with the troops, and um, they presented him with the flag that was flying over. Um, and then he's gone and done the seventh inning stretch with the Chicago Cubs. Um, he's been to every White House. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's him in the 
Milwaukee Bucks with um, President Obama. And then um, that's he and I at Montana Tech. Basketball oh. <laughs> is a family, family sport. Um, he, my, you know, I'm a coach's kid, um, mm-hmm. but my dad's a coach's kid. My grandpa was a coach. Mm-hmm. My grandpa coached my dad. My dad coached my brother. So this is my grandpa. That was my dad after he went to the Final Four and they proclaimed it killed in Samson Day in his hometown. Oh, um, that's so cool. But we're, we're full blood native. Um, my grandpa was the first Native American ever inducted into the North Carolina Coaches Hall of Fame, oh, wow. a um, association he was not allowed to be in mm-hmm. because of the color of his skin. Mm-hmm. And so I always tell the story just kind of when you think about perspective on some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up, um, my grandpa would go to these coaching clinics mm-hmm. and they would allow um, them to bring everyone to bring in their sons except for the minority coaches. Mm-hmm. The minority coaches had to be at the very top, you could barely hear. And my grandpa would go up to the top of these um, old field house gyms in the south, we're from mm-hmm. North Carolina, open up the window. My, bro- my dad would be outside of the gym, <laughs> sitting outside by the window, listening to the coach's clinic. Oh. And so when you think about yeah. that journey, yeah. um, you tend to be a bit more yeah. forceful. <laughs> but, but this game, this was, um, we played LSU in 2015. Um, it was our second year here. And it was the first time I think we kind of went, oh, we, we can get it done here. And it was also the first time that we got to see um, kind of that Hoffines magic that they all talked about. And it was because there was that like really low, hard ceiling and sound would go up and come back down. And so when we were redesigning the Partita Center, what was really important to us is that we didn't want to lose that, Mm -hmm. right? That's the magic. And so when you go into the Partita Center, you'll notice there isn't a big center board scoreboard. Mm -hmm. We wanted it to be video boards because we wanted to keep that ceiling low. Uh Ah, okay. Um, We also didn't want, um, a lot of times when you go in these beautiful arenas with these beautiful video boards, it turns into everybody just watching TV. And they're sitting down and they're eating popcorn and they're watching TV. Right. no, no, you're going to watch the game, and I want you to be engaged. I want yeah. you standing. I want you yelling. I want you um, doing crazy stuff, and that's how you build these atmospheres. Yeah, banging so we, on the seats. Exactly. <laughs> so we, on purpose, put the video boards on either side instead of the center part. Which is just one of my favorite pictures because that hair. <laughs> So when these kids graduate, they get their pictures. Oh, their man cute. caves are going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we come in. Um, here's game day training room. Again, nothing fancy, it's just game day. Game day coaches. Um, women play tomorrow, so this is my setup for them. Okay. But um, in every coach's locker room, and, I'll, and it's the same thing in the players, um, that would be the game block. Okay. And then you have, so you can kind of see like, how much time's on the clock. Um, and then you have, if you need to break down film, we, we um, keep one of our video guys in the back. So he's breaking down film live during action because at halftime, if our coaches are like, I need to see that thing again. Yeah. Yeah. I need to replay it real quick. Um, he, they can do it on the spot. Okay. And then redraw. Um, this is the game day. Um, again, when it's us, it's, it's our names, but these are just slides mm-hmm. that is quick to interchange. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Um, again, game clock. TV, and then I do photo shoots with recruits. Oh. And so we get to play with like red light and stuff. Right. I have a big photo um, backdrop. Mm-hmm. And so we, when we were building this area, we kind of said we need to do some red light so that we have some flexibility to do some stuff. Mm-hmm. So cool. <laughs> Here facing, uh-huh. so you'll have obviously print or TV journalists print. Okay. And then, and then Jim Nance, you know, who's the big CBS broadcaster who does the Masters and Final Fours. Mm-hmm. He's from here. He went to UH. Oh. He was a PA guy, <laughs> and so he donated my book to Jim Nance Media Center. Oh, oh. Nice. so UH not uh, trivia for you. 
<laughs> so um, when we designed this building, um, we're in Houston, where you are in a professional sports city. Ooh. So you try to take a little bit from what you can. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one thing we took from NBA arenas. Mm -hmm. um, this is the club area for all the courtside donors. Um. It's fifty thousand dollars, <laughs> and then you have to buy tickets to be courtside. Wow. Um, or me, and I just grabbed here. <laughs> um, um, I think much to the annoyance. Um, but they have this. They come up here pregame, after the game, and halftime. And then after the game, they can come in here, wait for the traffic. They have food, desserts, coffee, um, and they can watch the press conference. Oh wow! It is awkward when you're in there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll make it one day to be able to pay for those <laughs> seats. Um, um, they let me have one graphic in here. This is mine. Oh. Um, one thing about University of Houston basketball is, is, is the tradition and the history, and we weren't really celebrating it. Mm -hmm. And so these are all of our draft picks. Now, look, there's not, again, not a lot of schools that can have a mural mm -hmm. dedicated to their history. And in the back, we just put words that mean something to us. Heart, passion, mm -hmm. culture, family, mm -hmm. toughness. These are our Olympians. Um, we've had Olympians represent three, three countries. Ooh. And again, it didn't matter to us what country it is all. Yeah. Um, it's just an accomplishment. Dad's oh, yeah. been a USA coach several times. Mm -hmm. He's a coach in the World Games with Popovich with the Spurs. Mm -hmm. He's been um, named the USA Development Coach of the Year. Mm -hmm. Would you represent your country? It's, yes. it's an honor to it. These are all of our All Americans that's come through here. Um, again, a lot of schools get to put these amount of names up. And then Price and Jam, and the of the Century, of course. And then these are all of our NCAA. These lights go red, uh -huh. and that alerts them that the team is running through, and there's guards to hold them back. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> um, we have the lights are off, all the on-court stuff. This stuff here, a lot of it, sometimes it looks glow in the dark. It's not, but it's just kind of a cool effect. Oh uh, yeah. And then this is just the holographic director, right? When it's us preparing her game, it says for the city. Um, mm. Women is.
and, we, and this building is just kind of on the corner. There's a little L shape right mm -hmm. there. Okay, so we just got done with the tour. I got it, got a view of the Guy B. Lewis development facility as well as Fertitta Center. Thoughts? Super dope. Super dope. UVH is a uh, you know, line. You know, for a school that's not big, like a Duke or Kentucky or North Carolina, their facility is pretty state of the art. And it's all because of the Sampson family. So they really care about the program, their players, the city. So. So if anyone wants to play out. ball at U of H, you're, you're going to get some good stuff. Oh, yeah. You like know? what? 20 plus pairs of Jordans? Ooh. Oh, they, I think that, yeah, they received over 20 pairs of Jordans. Not very many schools can get that. Even even Duke can't get that. Yeah, not many schools are even sponsored by Jordan, so yeah. keep that in mind. And they get the Travis Scott shoes because Travis Scott's from Houston. Oh, yeah. Anything cool that stood out to you on the tour? Uh, just checking out their training facility the development part so the weight room the training the training office where they have like the rehab and where they trainers work with the players pretty state-of-the-art there's a lot of schools that don't have stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and they purposely named it the development facility not practice facility because that's where they develop the players yeah so as someone who likes to work out checking out the, the weight room for the basketball players was super dope mm -hmm. um, the equipment is pretty pretty state-of-the-art and very expensive. I think it's made by one of the best weightlifting equipment companies out there. And the whole rack is super customizable. This was actually my third, fourth tour, I think. <laughs> so I just kind of um, hit up Lauren and see if there's anyone that I find would be like interested in going to the tours. Um, this was the first time I got to actually go um, into the Fertitta Center and see um, where the game day action is. So that was pretty neat. That's where the um, the Legends Club plus place was as well as all the murals that Lauren decorated and designed. So it was pretty awesome because they definitely keep their past players' um, memories alive because um, they're still part of the history at UH. So it's really neat. There's a lot of history in that building. And we're Until out. Until next time.